Welcome to Ukraine Today. My name is Terry Shechko. A group of French deputies had a two-day visit to occupy Crimea on July the 29th, 30s, the second time after the annexation of the peninsula. Join me now to talk about that visit and how it corresponds to the international law is Vadim Truhan, Ukrainian diplomat and expert on European and international law. Hello, Vadim. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Hello, Taras. So the French foreign ministry uh, condemned that visit and they said it has nothing to do with the official position of the French government. So how do you, how do you define that uh, visit and uh, um, what is the status of that visit taken into account that uh, um, they are officials of France and uh, some of them are the representatives of France to the parliamentary assembly in the Council of Europe? I would say that this is unfortunate situation. Why uh, this situation is very unfortunate? Because France is part of so-called Normandy process. And France is a traditional, uh, strategically important for Ukraine partner. And in such a situation that anyone, even from marginal parties, uh, visit Cri Crimea, this is uh, really harmful for bilateral relations. At the same time, it is very important that, uh, as you rightly mentioned, Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, of France condemned this visit. Besides, uh, Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, uh, did actually the same. And in this situation, we, uh, we, we, everything what we can do to treat this visit as just private persons, which uh, have conducted uh, this kind of exercise in their own political interest, uh, which uh, fortunately uh, do not coincide with uh, official uh, policy, official position of France as our partner. So it's the second visit of French MPs to Crimea. Uh, what do they try to show and demonstrate by such a, an act? By the way, this is a very interesting question. Why this question is very interesting? Because if anyone uh, will go into biography of uh, the deputies visited Crimea, uh, easily he or she can find uh, uh, Russian heirs there. Because, for instance, uh, head of the delegation, Mr. Mariami, is closely linked to Russian politicians like Mr. Yakunin. He is actually married on, uh, with a Russian um, uh, woman and he is closely involved into uh, certain shadow Ukraine, uh, Russian uh, friends, uh, negotiations, consultation, business and so on. In my opinion, these deputies actually are trying to rise the political uh, position, the political value with uh, uh, Russians. And uh, I would say that uh, they do not have anything in common with international law, with position of friends, and with actually uh, traditionally uh, f uh, friendly spirit of uh, relationship between uh, our two countries, uh, I mean Ukraine and France. So you already mentioned the head of the delegation, Mariani. Uh, he, he always claims that Crimea is a part of Russia, uh, right now and uh, that the sanctions imposed against Russia uh, proved to be inefficient. So um, will he and all other deputies that came to Crimea have any responsibility for, for coming to Crimea? Uh, I mean the responsibility on behalf of, uh, of France. I have to admit that there is no any cr uh, criminal uh, uh, procedures uh, which can be uh, taken uh, by the uh, French law enforcement uh, 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 bodies or French uh, court system. At the same time, I think that, at least I hope, that political responsibility will be there. Even now we know that uh, uh, the place of uh, Mr. Mariami in his own party uh, is uh, marginalized. And uh, he, in my opinion, uh, doesn't have any brilliant or bright political future within his party or any other party. Actually, now his position is very close to nationalistic party uh, headed by Ms. Le Pen. And I have doubt that uh, in the future, uh, voters in France will again uh, provide him with the uh, mandate to represent uh, uh, French peoples in the parliament, in, uh, especially in the European um, uh, Council of Europe Parliamentary Assembly. Uh, so, um, after this, Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian security service, uh, they banned the entry for, for those people who visited Crimea the first time, and for Mariani in particular, the entry to Ukraine. But they still come to Ukraine, uh, to the Ukrainian territory, to the occupied territory in Crimea, and uh, using Moscow as the transition point. So, how can Ukraine uh, uh, stop 
that uh, that action on behalf of French deputies and all other deputies that maybe want to come to Crimea and support Russian occupation of Crimea. Uh, Taras, I have to admit that unfortunately, unfortunately, Ukraine as the state and especially our law enforcement agencies, they are very limited in the influence on such uh, uh, cases because de facto, temporary, uh, the territory of Crimea and Sevastopol uh, is now under um, uh, the Russian control. But uh, the fact that these persons were announced as, as personas non grata is really logical. And uh, from now on, or from the moment when this announcement was made, or decision was made, uh, they do not have any chances to enter uh, 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 Ukrainian territory, uh, uh, which is not under control of uh, Russia, but under control of Ukrainian state. Of course, this is kind of a symbolic step. They knew for sure uh, what they, uh, what kind of risks they actually can uh, face, but they uh, have made the choice, and uh, uh, their orientation is Russia, but not Ukraine. So I'm quite sure that for next uh, many many years we will not see these deputies in Kiev, in other um, cities of Ukraine, but um, uh, they will be limited with uh, the activity in uh, these uh, areas which are temporarily under control of Russia. Uh, so they come uh, to, to Crimea, what do they usually do there? They meet with the local so-called uh, representatives of Crimea or like something else? Uh, no, you know, uh, all the mass media uh, has published a uh, famous photo when one of the members of delegation kissed uh, the monument of so-called um, uh, green men or green soldiers. Yeah, uh, That was really very uh, funny episode in their presence in uh, Crimea. But to be realistic and pragmatic, I would not say that they bring something to uh, Crimean inhabitants, to actually citizens of Ukraine, which are forced now to live under the occupation. They do not bring investment, they do not bring any contracts or any international treaties or something like that. The uh, sanctions imposed by uh, the European Union, including uh, uh, France as member of the European Union and other democratic countries are there. And uh, this visit uh, just to, you know, to use um, uh, sort of political um, uh, pictures, funny pictures with presence of uh, uh, deputies from um, uh, the country which is uh, having good reputation in the European Union and so just to draw an attention of the sponsors from Russia that not uh, just official uh, uh, French position um, with condemnation of aggression is there, but also some alternative uh, positions which they actually represent. Ukraine's delegation to uh, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe expressed that they are outraged by that visit. And today, uh, the Verkhovna Rada, they, uh, they appeal to major French uh, bodies uh, with the same, with the very similar um, idea that they condemn it. So uh, what other legal instruments can Ukraine, uh, can Ukraine imply? Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, there is no uh, real instrument in the framework of Council of Europe which would prohibit such a visit. Besides, unfortunately, again, there is no instrument to punish uh, uh, the deputies which are uh, members of uh, Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe which actually uh, disobey uh, those resolutions made or uh, adopted by uh, the Parliamentary Assembly. And um, uh, these appeals, which we have noted from uh, Ukrainian parliamentarians, from Verkhovna Rada, they are really very important. But they have just political uh, uh, value, political um, uh, sort of um, uh, position. And I think that our delegation should work with the Bureau of Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe and with uh, deputies from other uh, democratic um, um, uh, delegations represented there from our uh, partner countries in order to introduce an instrument in terms of certain uh, internal document of uh, Parliamentary Assembly of uh, Council of Europe, which would uh, really not just prohibit uh, for the members of Parliamentary Assembly uh, uh, to visit Crimea, Sevastopol, and by the way, uh, temporary occupied territories of Ukraine on the eastern part of Ukraine, but also which would uh, uh, impose some sanctions of them. Uh, for instance, uh, um, prohibition to have a vote or even uh, uh, um, 
um, uh, exclusion of this kind of uh, um, deputies from the delegation of appropriate countries. I do not think that this will be easy process, but there is no other choice. Our deputies, our diplomacy should work on this. Instruments should be uh, uh, elaborated and adopted uh, within the Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe. Do you think uh, Ukraine's mission to the European Union is uh, efficient in uh, uh, preventing such, such actions to happen? I must say that we used to have one of the most professional diplomats there, Nikolai uh, uh, Tachitsky, and now we have got there a young but uh, brilliant diplomat, uh, Mr. Kuleba, and they uh, do their best in order to, you know, professionally represent Ukrainian interests within the parliamentary assembly, assembly. But we have to take into consideration uh, the nature of these uh, uh, bodies, Council of Europe, parliamentary as uh, uh, assembly of uh, uh, the Council of Europe, uh, committee of ministers, bureau, and so on. They are very much independent. They are very much, uh, uh, dif I mean, they have different fractions uh, within the um, um, uh, in their positions and uh, not just a mission should work on these issues but also our uh, diplomacy uh, our uh, diplomatic missions in the capitals of the Council of Europe uh, member states our deputies should be more active not just when something happened but, uh, but as a routine uh, exercise on every day um, uh, as everyday business as usual business visiting different countries contacting different uh, uh, deputies from um, not just our uh, traditional uh, partners like Poland Lithuania and so on but also those countries which are not that friendly which are you know have which sometimes have doubts whether sanctions should be um, uh, uh, still there or they have to be lifted partially or totally and so on we have to be able to work on different levels with, with different representatives of international community on the political level, uh, on the diplomatic level, but also we have not to include, uh, include such um, levels like business level and civil society level. As um, uh, our efforts will be uh, agreed between ourselves, as, uh, as they will be systematic and regular, as um, uh, uh, such a results actually we will achieve. We are actually facing unprecedented uh, situation. Uh, really, this is a hybrid war, and uh, Russia is really a very powerful state with huge resources, which uh, uh, Russia invests into mass media, into different political parties. Like in Europe, there are 32 parties oriented on Russia. In invest into business, into civil society organization, and so on. And Ukraine alone is not able to tackle this kind of challenge. We have to work together with the international community because this challenge is not just for Ukraine, but also for European Union, for Council of Europe, for international com community as a whole. And what is more important, this challenge actually against uh, uh, common uh, European values, which we share together with our partners. If our efforts will be effective, if our eff efforts will be really strategically agreed among ourselves, then we will be ready and then we will be able to tackle this uh, kind of challenge. And I hope that uh, in several um, uh, years uh, uh, we will have a completely different situation when uh, Ukrainian territorial uh, integrity will be re uh, reinstalled. Thank you, Vadim, for sharing your opinion about that visit of uh, French MPs to Crimea. I hope that uh, the, the efforts of our diplomats in Europe and in European countries will be effective to prevent such actions in the future. Thank, Thank you, you for any time to come to Ukraine today. Vadim Truhan, Ukrainian diplomat and expert on European and international law, joined Ukraine today to talk about the recent visit of French MPs to occupied Crimea. My name is Teres Chechko. Thank you for watching Ukraine today.